Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of No More Excuses. I'm your host, Sandy Ballard, the badass business coach. Thanks for being here, for listening, and sharing the podcast with others. Please do that. And don't forget to direct message me on social media or email me, sandy at sandyballard.com, sandy with an I, because I'd love to know where you're listening. I always check the stats and I wonder, who's in Bangladesh? Who's in Texas? Who's out there listening? I would love to hear from you. So thank you for doing that. And today's podcast is going to be a little different than the other 411. As I've been getting asked a lot as I'm out networking in new groups and meeting new people, I keep getting asked, how did you get into coaching? What got you started? What made you get there? So I had this feeling maybe I should share a little bit of my story because, you know, I want to share with you that I get it. I've been there. I've been in the, the trenches of business ownership. I've started with nothing. I've ended with nothing. I've started over again. I've made it. You know, it's it's a roller coaster ride. And so today, I just want to share with you a little bit about how in 2012, I realized I was not where I wanted to be. Like the title of this podcast asks, are you where you want to be? I realized I was not. In fact, people close to me were starting to inform me of that. They were starting to call me out. And it sat heavy with me. It was the end of 2012, you know, so I'm sitting there, you know, get through the holidays and I'm in January, like, okay, it's a new year. What the fuck? What a way to start out a year, right? You know, you think you're going in a direction and then you get you get called out by a few of your very good friends and mentors and the man candy. But that's all right, right? You expect it from, from them. But, you know, this was the first month of 2013, a new year, a perfect time to just set new goals and get going. And instead, I decided it was time to do a deep dive into myself. Yes. What have I done? And clearly, what the fuck haven't I done? And that's what I was thinking. Some days I would literally lay on the floor in the middle of my office and think that and go, what the hell am I doing with my life? You know, I've said I was going to do a lot of things, but evidently I hadn't. And yes, I I learned from doing this, just this self thought process that I had a lot of fear guiding me and holding me back. But from what, right? From what? From all the things I wanted to do? I didn't think I was afraid of traveling or afraid to move out of Indiana. I didn't think I was afraid to change careers, but evidently I was. I love this quote. It's in, it's in my book, my first book, From There to Here. Fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. And hate leads to suffering. Some of you might know that. Yoda. Yes. Love me some Yoda. You know, and I know, even though I, th I felt happy and loved and still do love laughing, I felt loved as well. But I love laughing. I love to make other people laugh. And, you know, so where was this coming from? You know, but I knew I had some edge to me. Most people that I've known for a long time know I'm kind of edgy. Hence the badass business coach. But I knew also there was something missing. Although I thought I had done a lot. I mean, hell, at 25, I was managing an art department. I had owned multiple businesses, including a women's professional tackle football team. Yes, women's pro tackle football. Got the pinky to prove it, a broken leg, and some knee issues if you've listened long enough. Knee, hands, all that stuff. Had a lot of surgeries because I played hard and I'm paying harder, and that's okay. I had a blast. I played, I loved every moment of that aggressive and painful game. I loved the ownership side. And, you know, there's so much that uh, my business partner and I did for the league and women in sports that no one knows because um, it wasn't documented, but that's cool. I loved it, and I love seeing the advancement of women in sports and refereeing and all that stuff today. I love seeing that we, the Indian Pacers, like we, I live in California, but I still love the Indian Pacers as Jenny, as a female, she's the female assistant coach. I love it. So anyway, I loved all of that. So 
I didn't realize things were missing in my life. But, you know, I, I even love the strategy, the chaos, also the friendships and the financial challenges of owning a women's sports team. <laughs> you know, but we had some amazing teachers and mentors and I traveled regularly, which I loved. So I thought I was living. I thought I was doing stuff, but evidently I wasn't. I took time to really think about my goals, what I wanted to be known for. And I created my first worksheet before I even decided to be a coach. I wrote down what I like to do, what I don't like to do, and perhaps have been doing it. What I've heard people say about me, the good and the bad, what they like about me, what they think I'm good at, that kind of stuff. And what, then after all that, it's like, okay, what job, career, or industry aligns with that? And well, in February of 2013, I found my calling coaching. Yes, I love it. I loved learning <clears throat> when I was in my certification courses that I, I heard I was a natural. Other coaches on the class uh, calls wondered how long I'd been coaching and thought I'd just come back to freshen up my skill set because the where I went, Coachville, you can go back at any time and just hop on a course. And I love it. I haven't done it in a couple of years, but I will do it again. I just said that. I got to do it now. Um, but, you know, that I, I got that, uh, I don't know, that confidence boost I needed. I felt comfortable coaching. I felt comfortable talking to people because I uh, evidently I've heard over the years, how do you know so much about people or that person? When did, why did they tell you their whole life story? I'm like, I don't know, but now it makes sense, right? So, you know, I was in the middle of the certification process and I realized even though I had that confidence booster I needed and I felt really good about my path, I still wasn't there yet. My daughter went off to college, that little, that little shit. <laughs> she moved from Indianapolis to California in June, you know, and so her sports were done. I still remember that she caught the last out of her last game of her sports career. She was done. So we were done with all of that lessons and, and practices and traveling um, and, and the fun hanging out with the team and the rainouts and the long drives and the agony of uh, defeat with her in the car after a, a bad game, you know, and also my traveling was ending because I was also done with the football league, football team and the league. I was lost again. It was time for me to really dig down and do some self-reflecting and find me. So yes, I'd already done that worksheet. I was already all, yeah, already into the coaching, but I, I was starting to feel empty again, right? And that's when I really realized I was cautious. I was always more excited for other people than myself. And I realized I hadn't done shit towards my goals. A goal without a plan is just a wish, right? And evidently I was living in that wish world. So I took that step. One of my one of my first courses in coaching was step up and stand out. So like, like the badass I am, I put it out there that I'm a coach, even without a certification. You don't need a certification, but I wanted one and I wanted to learn all about it. I wanted to learn the ins and outs and the ways to help clients the best way I could. So I put myself out there as a coach and I started writing my first book from there to here. You know, and I also submitted to speak about the book before it was written. Yeah, I jumped in. I was in, I was doing it. And I also then, like I talk about, got overwhelmed because I did too much. Putting it out there that to speak, the proposal to speak before the book was done was probably what sent me over the edge. And I did pause on the book for a little bit, but I also started getting coaching clients right away. It was really cool. And it helped me get into that groove and find myself again, right? And for those of you who are parents and have kids gone up, grow up and gone off into the world and you don't feel as needed anymore, or you don't know what to do without all the crazy 
softball games, soccer games, football games, band practice, band contests, all this stuff, right? I had a, a friend who was a, a band mom. She would volunteer to help load the truck, unload the truck, do all the things. And then her, when her son graduated, it was like, oh, now what? So, you know, she had to refine, reinvent herself, find herself again. So it, I'm not the only one, but man, I felt alone. I felt like a fraud. You know, it's not always easy to do what you think you want to do or should be doing. I'm grateful for my friends who called me out on it as well, because honestly, I don't know where I'd be today without them doing that. You know, as my first book ends, right? So just for today, I am here. Where are you? I, I loved ending that book like that because, and I'm glad I thought to say that today because I want you to think about that. Are you where you want to be? If so, are you sure? Was it easy getting there? Maybe those goals weren't uh, big enough. What more can you do to get to, to that next level? And if you're not where you want to be, what's going on? What's not going on? What's getting in the way? And what are you willing to do for you? I hope that by sharing a bit more about my own personal struggle, and yes, it was a midlife crisis as well. Um, I, I, want it, I hope that it inspires you and others that it's never too late. Okay, almost never too late. I did share in the book that there was one thing that I really wanted to do. <laughs> too afraid, too afraid to do it. But by the time I decided to grow the balls to, to mention it to my dad to help me, I was a little aged out. But that's okay. It's not really okay. But that really stung me. That really hit home that I needed to grow the balls to start asking and saying and talking about, but taking those steps to do what I want to do. Taking, or taking the opportunity to create the plan to achieve those goals. And I want to challenge you to do the same, right? Yes, you know, I'm letting you know that I get it. I've been there. I know what it feels like to be lost. And in a sense, faking it until I was hoping that someday I'd fucking make it, right? And I finally did. But I had to go through that process to get there. So again, I'd love to hear from you and challenge you. Even if you think you are where you want to be, you know, think about it. What do you like to do? What don't you like to do that perhaps you're doing? What have you heard people say about you, good or bad? And is the industry or career you're in or business you're in align with that? All right, comment, email me, sandy at sandyballer.com. Tell me, or you can also request this as an official worksheet. worksheet. I'll send it to you. And shameless promo, yes, I mentioned my first book. I actually have four. They're all available on Amazon. The link is in the comment section. But if you're just hearing this while you're driving, you can go to my website, badassbusiness.coach, and there's a store link. Or just email me, direct message me. I'll send it to you. And yes, this activity and many others are in all of my books because I have them in there to help you think bigger, dig deeper to think bigger, and play stronger. So that's what I do as a coach. I help people get from there to here. I help you get from where you are to where you want to be. So if that interests you, grab some time on my calendar. Let's chat. The link is in the comments or in this dissertation monologue. Um, or again, you can email me for it. I just love to hear from you. And until next time, just realize you are badass. Sometimes we just have to have that spark uh, lit again, like I did. All right. Have a great day. Cheers.